Ah, yeah. Welcome along to Sunday morning. You're listening to John Richardson uh, live on the Russell Howard Show. Uh, Six Music Sunday morning, 10 till 1. We're going to have lots of fun. Uh, We'll do the same old stuff. We'll do Am I Normal. We'll chat about good deeds you try to do. The way to get in touch is 64046, and the email is russell.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. As ever, I'm joined by a special guest for one week only, and this week it's, uh, it's the voice of Radio Mansfield, Mr Matt Ford. Hello, Britain. <laughs> oh, nice, very nice. How are you, Matt? I'm planning that all week. Uh, I'm fine, thanks. That's your big opening, was it? That's squandered. Right. You, we, re- you realise we have international listenership, thanks to the internet. There may be people listening to this Greetings in Greetings also to the rest of Europe, and indeed the world. Right, excellent. And are you going to talk in this way for the three hours? I'll be varying my voice. Uh, this is the standard radio voice I've chosen for at least the first five minutes. <laughs> right, it's okay. It's a bit out of partridge now. But right, well, it's already five again. past ten, so... Uh, so, oh, uh, you know, you got up ridiculously early to come in this morning. Got up at half four. Yeah. Had a shower. Right. Uh, had some cornflakes and uh, drove down here. How are you still at half four? Can't even comprehend it. Well, I had an early night. Did you? What, did you, you can't You've sleep, got to be though, sensible you? with these things. You, you can't be getting daft. You <laughs> can let it go to your head and go out on the pop and celebrate and say, hey, boys, tomorrow morning. But then you make a full night yourself. I did a horrible gig in East London last night, which uh, which one of the two Adams, Mr. Adam Deneen, was at. I won't ask him to comment on it live because it was pretty abhorrent, to be honest. Nothing like looking at a room of 200 people you're supposed to entertain and thinking, I wouldn't mind if a 100 of you just fell into the sea and didn't make it back. Oh, dear. Yeah, I, I'm not a very nice person when I, when I get turned, Matt. So, uh, nicknames, we're getting some in. You told me during that record that you had one at school. Well, I had, I had two sep- I, had a, I had a primary school nickname and a secondary school nickname. Um, my, my primary school nickname was Scab. Um, right, not, lovely. Not because I crossed the picket line, I had eczema. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was because uh, because of that. And then my second, my my one at secondary school was coined by a teacher, and it also related to my skin condition. Oh, well, that's and, nice. Um, <laughs> the Flaky. Fact I, the fact that I know I, I broke wind as well, and he used to call me Scratch and Sniff. Oh, lovely stuff. I thought it was quite a good nickname. Yeah, I'm not sure that's quite appropriate for a teacher to uh, to make fun of a skin condition. No, that's right, or indeed the other condition. Well, flatulence, I believe, should be made fun of because you can't condone that sort of thing in the classroom. It's a place of learning, not farting. But if it's happening a lot to you, you do <laughs> suffer as a result. I mean, I know others do as well. Um, were they audible or were they like, was it that he was but picking up on... it's not like on... smoking where I choose to smoke and therefore it affects you as well and we're <laughs> you, all bad. You can, worse off you can do things about gas, can't you? No. You can change your diet, you can hold some in. What's I mean, how many times are you... How long were your lessons at school? I had a normal... Well, your lessons were about an hour and ten minutes, aren't Were they? Mine were 40. Well, Just get them done. Double period, hour and 20. But you can bang that out in an hour and 15 with the gap at the either side. So, how many times are you farting in an hour lesson? In an hour lesson, at that age, when my hormones were doing ten to the dozen, I was probably doing... One every this five, sounds, five minutes or something like that. I never like measured it. A really I never, rubbish. I never really measured it. This sounds like a really rubbish sort of drug thing, you know, well, probably at my <laughs> lowest. I was probably farting about once every five minutes. And, well, I, then I lost relationships corn. as a result. <laughs> corn will make it worse. Apparently red meat makes it worse. Well, I'll tell you what does me. is actually beans. I know it's a cliche. Red onions. Oh, Lord. Don't even get me started really? on red onions. Maybe that's... Big, I can't have a red onion. If I know I've got something important to do that day, red onions are out of the window. Cooked or raw? Raw. Raw. Uh, so nickname's coming in then. We're not we're not going with scratch and sniff. Uh, D says out on a limb. How do you fancy giggling Joe Sparkle Pants? It's not the best. Well, I haven't heard the others yet, but hopefully it's, <laughs> it's not the improve. best out of one. <laughs> well, that is harsh criticism of D's nickname there. Well, it's not the best I've heard so far. How about dodgy forearm? Dodgy Steve forearm. Wrexham. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, nickname alert. I think grinning chuff monkey would rather <laughs> would sit well on the young fellow's shoulders. Uh, please call him sausage. That's from Dave in the bath. Oh, that's... I don't know if he's sort of saying the bath, bath, as in the west of England. I imagine he's actually in the bath. Washing himself. He wants to be careful using transmitting material, then, because he'll get an electric shock. Yeah, I don't think a phone will do that much to you. You're bigger, Dave. Oh, he's He's texted that in, has he? He's texted that in, yeah. Visions of him with his laptop. (laughs) <laughs> oh dear you live in you live in a very 21st century world though don't you your computer goes everywhere with you otherwise you lose touch with the world uh, so he says sausage uh mr boom shanker uh from heather in canterbury uh nickname should be betty from but, hugh in swansea yeah, but he hasn't got a real name he's calling himself boom shanker 
No, he says to call you Boom Shanko, oh, and right. it's a lady. God, get with it, man. Sorry. There are women in the world. We might talk to one later. We've Hello, started ladies. a new feature called Awkward Conversations, where I talk to a girl and do it very badly, and about five minutes in, ask them ridiculous questions about what they had for their tea. We had an email in this week from Claire saying, Hey, John, are you going to continue to use the radio as your own personal dating service? This could be seen as a misuse of the facilities. It's only really a misuse if I actually sort of meet up with the girls and go out with them. Whereas at the moment, we just talk, and then I sort of skulk away and never meet them. Uh, Smurfette as a nickname, Mark? Nah. No? Cliché. Uh, <laughs> well, no, that caught me by surprise. Daft. Let's reference a childhood TV favourite and, you know, pick a female character because he's a guy. Nah. On to a loser with that one. You can tell they're sort of getting up at half four. He's starting to kick in now. <laughs> he's been jolly all morning, but now he's not liking this. Well, this one is uh, bowl-faced pudding tits. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, was that a swear word at the end? Tits isn't a swear word, is it? You can say tits, as right. in tit bits. Oh, right, OK. Uh, no, I don't like that one either. Call him Minky <laughs> from Matt in Brighton. Ferret. Uh, Tiddlywinker. Or the Wolfman. The Wolfman. Yeah, I knew you'd like the Wolfman. Definitely the Wolfman. I left that one till last. You're not having Wolfman. Not no, having Wolfman. Almost. This is true. Another nickname. It never. It was coined once and never repeated. Um, someone once called me Team Wolf because I had hairy legs before everyone else. Right. You so sound like quite the catch at school with your <laughs> eczema, flatulence, and hairy body. Mm-mm. Did you have a girlfriend through school? I don't think there's any. <laughs> um, right then, well, uh, I'm going to mull those over. I like bowl face pudding tits, but it's a bit long. Uh, I like Minky. You could uh, you could have BFT. The BFT? Oh, well, maybe we'll do the BFT. Oh, no, BFPT. Right. Well, you could drop pudding, just bowl face tits, <laughs> or uh, pudding. We'll just call you pudding. I like pudding. Because you're a little bit fat as well, aren't you? I've lost weight, what, what size, <laughs> thanks to the cornflakes that I... Uh, talked about earlier. Hard for breakfast. That's a good thing about getting ha- I go up at half past four, you get so much more done And in McDonald's the day. isn't open. Yeah, that, that is the benefit. That really is the benefit. Six o'clock they open and that waft doesn't half catch you. Uh, that was Pharaoh, Pharaoh Munch. Uh, and we had Manic Street Preachers before that. We also had lots of other stuff going on there. Lots of noises and tracks. Now... You're supposed to take the hit, aren't you, sometimes? You're just supposed to gloss over. But, I mean, that I can't... I, that, that wasn't my fault, was it, Adam? I'm not asking you to take the hit for that. I would, I would take the hit every now and again. I'm a team player, do you know what I mean? I was willing to go for the... The news thing wasn't my fault, and I was going to take that. But then the other stuff... By disaster number four... I clearly had to own up. Didn't yeah, I? By, the, by the fourth one. I mean, I don't know if the webcam doesn't reload fast enough for you to see a man diving across a studio to just press every button. I was quite. What did you do last night? Because I listen to John Holmes' show sometimes, and he gives you a real kick in. He does. He calls you the producer that isn't the producer. Yeah. And now I, I, I've got respect for your work. Uh, I agree with your history in radio. But something, what's happening today? I think it was those um, lip syncing trannies last night. Yeah, you went to see some balance. lip syncing transvestites. Where was that? Uh, Bethnal Green. Bethnal Green. Well, there you go. I mean, you've, you've been warned. If you do have a high-profile job, probably best you don't go and see the... Li- what time did you get in? Half past four, he was up. He hasn't sworn or anything, Shakira. I know. He's been very good. What time did you go, Bobos? Not go to my bed. It was somewhere around his... Somewhere around when he went and got up. Him. Unbelievable. Well, you're listening to uh, possibly my last show on Six Music. Um, emails are coming in. Someone says... Uh, who won Eurovision? The fascists who dictate the news didn't seem to feel it worthy of a mention. They probably did mention it, but in fairness, we were probably just playing something else over the top. Um, Dave says, I wasn't, wasn't that bothered before, but now I feel the need to know. Was it Serbia, I believe? Hold on a second. Do none of us know. Wow, we're going live. To, I'm pretty sure it was Serbia. Um, but no, I know we got a pound Serbia. in again. Did Serbia, that. thanks, Matt. Yeah. And you can hear the rustle of the papers. That's live news updates happening for you. So, did you watch it, Matt? I watched. I stayed up to watch Scooch. I did my bit. Which should mean uh, something very quite, different, shouldn't it? I thought they were quite good. Right. But not good. Eurovision good. It's right. It's in context, isn't it? I, That's I, the problem, it isn't it? But I thought, actually, this could win. Right. This did is, you? <laughs> it's a bit risque. There are a few kind of um, uh, innuendos in there. Right. I don't understand like Eurovision. Like during your flight, sir, and stuff like that. It's you got know, uh, trolley dollies. It's got its own identity, hasn't it, Eurovision? I think that's the problem. Shouldn't they just do music on it? And it's a bad identity. Yeah, it is really cheesy, and like people only watch it for Terry Wogan's inappropriate comments, and that, that's no reason to watch a program. If they want to give Terry Wogan a vehicle, give him one. Radio uh, too, I think it's cool. Yeah, well, he's got Chris Moyles crawling all over him, so I heard. Uh, do you listen to Chris With Moyles? This sounds like something he got to see last night. <laughs> Moyles crawling all over Wogan and 
some trannies, I don't know, narrating it to Scooch or whatever they call <laughs> This is like a show in the pipeline. Well, we'll go on tour next week. People are requesting, someone says, please come to Canterbury. I've been to Canterbury, I enjoyed it. I can't remember where. I, I did the university in Canterbury. I thought you slated Canterbury and said all it had was a cathedral. I never said that, Matt. You're putting words in my mouth. Uh, uh, yeah, I did say that. Um, I, I like Canterbury. It's nice. It's just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I've done the gold belt. The gold, the gold belt. Sorry, I've done you over there, haven't I? You have done, yeah. Yeah, you've, you've proper... Everyone's turning against me today, the production team. But you did go on to say that the cathedral actually was good. And that the, the I didn't go in the cathedral. I'm not paying a fiver to get into a cathedral. I'm trying to save you. That's not tax deductible. Um, are you doing any gigs in the Portsmouth area? I am doing uh, a gig in Portsmouth sometime soon. And please come to Canterbury. I will go to Canterbury at some point. Uh, someone says, you clearly need a tour of Kent. Um, I don't think I do, to be honest. I'm very proud of my city and guarantee you would eat your words if you came to Canterbury. It's the only thing you would eat. The food's awful. <laughs> the food in Canterbury, yeah, all of it. Um, we were talking. Why were we talking about food earlier? Oh, you've started cooking because you've yes. moved in. I've well, I've, <laughs> I've I've been living with a housemate of mine for quite some time, but I've only just started cooking for myself. Right, make a good spaghetti bolognese. I make my own bolognese sauce. I don't use any you know ragu or anything like that. I right. cook it from scratch with go on garlic, uh, tomatoes tinned, and um, passata. Right. Things like that, yeah. Putting a bit of tomato puree, thicken it up. Use whole wheat spaghetti. Oh, I don't oil, like so. all that stuff. Brown rice. Right, well, the last girlfriend I had, and that was some time ago, he used to eat brown rice, nice. and I think she's still digesting it. It's rank, horrible stuff. No, it's good for you. It's, it's good like for your eating. Heart. Yeah, it's good for you, but it's like eating pellets. Just have white rice. Well, and cook then... it first. Even when you cook it, though, it's one of the few foods that just doesn't change its texture when you cook it. It's no. just still like a bullet. So you don't like shredded wheat or anything like that? A shredded wheat softens when you put milk on it. All right, so you like some whole grain based. Yeah, food. but basically, I like anything that's been endorsed by Ian Botham. That's my barometer for food. I oh, didn't do shreddies, did shredded no, he wheat. did adultery, I think, as well. Oh! <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can get away. Well, look, everything's going wrong today, so we can get away with that. If you're ever going to blaspheme or insult Ian Botham. I didn't know he was adulterous. I thought he was. Well, we, sure. it's the sort of thing we should surely... Talking, it's just your opinion. I'm not talking recently. <laughs> this is I the thought, opinion of Matt Pod. I'm sure I had, as a child... As a child? That was my lasting what sort of upbringing of did you have? Of beefy. What do you want for your breakfast? Probably a nickname that he got through some sort of conquest. What do you want for your breakfast, flaky? And uh, while you watch your cartoons, I'm going to tell you something you're not going to want to hear about Ian Botham. We had a cracking... <laughs> See, people are still texting in nicknames, and I, I think we've got a settle on Shakira, but someone texted in, how about flaking Stevens? Oh, that's good. That's very good, isn't it? You know, <laughs> flaking Stevens. So maybe we have that as your like, middle name. Like Shakira flaking Stevens Ford. We'll do that. How's that for you? That's fine. Um, so Eurovision we've done. Someone says Grub Worm. That's just a little bit rude, that. I don't, what, that's a nickname for me? Yeah, Grub Worm. No, I don't like that at all. No. Well, we've, we've settled it now. Uh, in the next ten minutes, we're going to be talking to Russell Howard. He's in Australia. He's on tour. I spoke to him midweek. I think it's getting a little bit masculine for him. He was enjoying Melbourne because it was very bohemian, cosmopolitan. And uh, he's gone on tour now, and he's just in sort of towns that are just men who live in sheds coming to see him do comedy. So uh, we'll have a live update on that, and I'll be joined uh, for the further two and ten minutes. Now, I'm going to press a track now. It says stateless. I'm going to let Adam, our producer, press it. I guarantee you that will work. You get a roll. This is incredible. Are you willing to put your career on the line? That if I press this button and exit by stateless does not come up, you will never work in radio again? Yeah, because this is really going to matter if it doesn't. This will be the clincher of my career. Oh, really? Right, OK, then. We'll, let's just have a oh, little Lord. second tension. A producer's career is on the line. An exit by stateless is on the track list. Here it comes. But, uh, another email in from Dee, who suggested giggling Joe sparkle pants. She sent the same email again, but then ended with, apologies for the first one, I had to send it again because I realised I sent the first one in Comic Sans. I'm humbled by my thoughtlessness and apologise deeply. I would just hand on Comic Sans as a font. Don't like it. It started off wacky, wasn't it, and everyone used it. Oh, it's just daft when you get emails off people, and it's in purple as well. Yeah, people You're mental, used to, you are. People used to do uh, school projects in Comic Sans, and I always thought, just treat your work with some respect. You know, you're only, you're only 12, but come on. Times New Roman. Yeah. Ariel. Yeah. I quite like Impact. I used to do uh, Baskerville. Franklin Gothic book. <laughs> oh, you're listening to Naming Fonts <laughs> for no reason at all. So, the nickname has to be decided now. Oh, we've got a few more in. Uh, Blythe Discharge. I don't quite know what that no, means. That I think like I like uh, it. Some sort of ooze. Based on the flatulence revelation, how about two-stroke? 
<laughs> sounds like something else. I'm pretty sure I don't understand that, but you laughed, so I assume it's funny. How about Tinkles from Ollie in Cambridge? Uh, I quite like that. Uh, call him Sweetie Pie from Mandy in Leicester. Desperate for some homoeroticism on the show, Mandy. Uh, and then uh, Claire says, how about Yeti? <laughs> Yeah. Yeti's a bit harsh, I think. Um, I quite like dodgy forearm. I quite like grinning chuff monkey, to be honest. I think we're going to stick with Minky. I quite like Minky. It's... Where did Wolfman? That was at the top of the Yeah, list. but Wolfman's too cool. Well, I yeah. can't be joined by Wolfman. Wolfman sounds like the sort of person who'd get his own show. And uh, that's not what this guest spot is all about. This is all about keeping people in their place. Minky's nice, isn't it? You happy with Minky? And they make rubber be. gloves as well. I'll, so. I'll accept the will of the people. If they're saying minky, then I'm minky. There's a sort of, there's a sanitary aspect to it as well. You know, you can do the dishes and not get rinky minkles. Wrinkly minkles. Wrinkly hands. You're getting tied up in knots already with it. I don't think this is a good nickname. You're not happy with minky? Minky, I'm yeah, sticking. Sounds... Am I sticking with minky? It sounds too Two cute. Adams. What do we think? Minky? Works for me. Works for you? Yeah, Denine's not happy it. with it. Well, I've had a very rude one that says uh, a body part and then invader. I don't think I need to go into that <laughs> one. Um, someone's uh, Heather from Canterbury in again. Do I plan to bring my comedy to Canterbury? You'd love this part of Kent. I'm not sure how I feel about Kent, you know. It's a very up and down place. Canterbury, what makes me angry is, as far as I can see, all that's there is a cathedral. And they charge you to get into it, which is a bit rude, I think. God charging an entrance fee. And then other parts of Kent. I went to Rochester once, and that was... Uh, not so nice. Have you been to Kent? I, I've been to Tunbridge Wells. Is that in Kent? Yes, Didn't Royal Kent. Tunbridge Wells. They're very, very happy that they live in Royal Tunbridge Wells, and they're very keen to make you aware that you don't live in Tunbridge Wells, which offends me, that confidence in your existence. But then there's a, there's a food restaurant, a Chinese food restaurant, called... Um, uh, it's an Elvis Presley-themed Chinese restaurant. So you think you can't get too proud about being in a place if you share a town with an Elvis Presley-themed Chinese restaurant. And I ate in there, the meat was terrible, and I only love meat tender. <laughs> you have to laugh at that, Matt. That's what you're here for. <laughs> if I do a joke and it's rubbish. <laughs> now, I have another guest in Brilliant. the studio. He's been away for a couple of weeks. We're going to speak to Russell Howard live on air, but as you know, I've had the Rustbot 3000 in with me, who's a friend. Regular listeners to the show will know that it's a synthetic Russell who's designed to respond the way Russell always did. I had a real problem with it the last two weeks. It's malfunctioned, and it had only two responses, which is very bad because I take it home with me for a bit of company. So I go down in the morning and say, all right, Russell, uh, how are you this morning? And it would respond. Don't give me that shit. You f That's very harsh first thing in the morning. The other response would I'd say something like, uh, How do Russell? Would you like a cup of tea? And he would say, Oh, shut up, John. You're not my real dad. Now, you can't have conversations like that over and over again. So I spent the last two weeks trying to get it fixed. It turns out there's a helpline that you can call to have it repaired. And, and through the wonders of technology, I can bring you the conversation I was able to have with uh, someone at the Rustbot helpline. Hello, Budbot helpline. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, I'm having a few problems with my, uh, my Budbot. Um, what model is it? It's the Rossbot 3000. Is that the Russell Grant edition? No. The, the brand? No, no, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the shorter one. It's the, uh, Russell Howard edition. Ah, making me a bit temperamental. Um, what's, uh, what's the matter with it? Well, uh, it's swearing a lot, and it's, it's ter- it's just generally resentful and rude. Uh-huh. Uh, um, you been feeding it mud? No. Well, you should have been. Oh. Every day. Oh, right. Uh, c- uh, can it be fixed? Um, well... If you uh, if you reach round to the panel at the back, yeah. No, if you make me do that, I'll chuck up. You should find uh, should be a packet in there. Ah, oh, yeah, it looks like uh, sort of brown mulch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be uh, shreddies, cocoa pops. Shreddies, rice krispies, cocoa pops, golden grahams, crunchy nut cornflakes, frosties, which are really working class crunchy nut cornflakes. Truth be told. Yeah, yeah, all all that and uh, jelly tots and uh, cod liver oil. Um, so put that lot in its mouth. Okie dokie, got it. John, I love you. Fantastic. Well, brilliant. Well, uh, very much uh, very much. thank you for your help. No problem at all. Love to your mother. Ta-da! <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> I love love to your mother as a way of ending conversations. I think I'm going to try and get that started as a way of ending any conversation. Even I'd like it to go in the dictionary as a formal, acceptable way of ending an email instead of yours sincerely. Love Wait, to your mother. Can't go in the dictionary. It's just words, not phrases. Yeah, all right, all right. Jesus, we had a chat about Susie Dent last week and someone emailed in to say that their boyfriend's obsessed with Susie Dent. Who's and Susie Dent? Th- who is Susie Dent? Oh. Are you serious? Who's Susie Dent? Yeah. She's only the woman who saved Countdown. You know, there was talk in politics and everything about people going, oh, Countdown, we're really worried about it. They brought in Susie Dent. She's Dictionary Corner in, in, uh, in Countdown. 
Oh, the youngish lady with the brown hair. Yeah, she's older than you think. My friend searched for her on the internet. She's older than you think. All right, okay. But anyway, I can't remember how we got onto Susie Dent. But I've got the Ross spot with me. I've got we had another late a late contender, Shakira as a nickname. Do you quite like it? Will lead to confusion because technically you aren't Shakira. <laughs> I say technically, in every way possible, you aren't Shakira. But as from Tommy Tyronchester, he says he wants it because he heard it being shouted at a toddler in Wilkinson's in Cheltenham because the toddler fell over and bowled into a whole display of antiperspirant and the mother shouted it and clearly had called her child Shakira. So I think to turn that on its head and use it as an ironic nickname for a, <laughs> a man with eczema body hair and severe <laughs> flatulence might prevent that from ever happening again. So as a public service, I'm going to call you Shakira Fine. in the hope that I can ruin any beauty that might lie behind that name. Uh, text and emails coming in. Uh, we are... Um, we're going to... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, the lights are flashing now. This is a, Did you see that light flash then? I think that's the phone, which means we were about to have a Russell Howard on the line, which is terribly exciting. Um, no, we've had a tick 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 We've had a tick text in, which is an orange and green text that comes in a box. Uh, Serbia won, says Jess. I was annoyed because it was a serious song. And Eurovision is a time where all the European countries get together and make fools of themselves. Terry Wogan made quite a few bad comments, one about Russians. I'd quite like to hear that, to be honest. If you, uh, 64046, if you remember any of Terry Wogan's slightly dubious remarks from last night, text them in and we'll laugh at him. Um, now, we're going to get on to Am I Normal now, which is a feature where uh, people confess to habits that they're maybe not proud of, but secretly they're proud of. And uh, today we're getting to it off the back of this email from Dave in Manchester, which is a cracker, right? He's, yeah, he's a long-term listener to the show. Now, Matt, I talk a lot about hand dryers, uh, believing that they're, they're the future of hygiene in this country. And I, I've got a big, big, big thing for the Dyson Airblade. Amazing hand dryer. Recirculates the air, cleans it, purifies it. Design, beautiful. Dave says, I'm writing to you because of the Dyson hand dryer that you mentioned last week, having found one in a local, if rubbish, Italian restaurant. Uh, it's everything that you said it was, fast, efficient, and of innovative design. However, I'm not sure what's worse, because I was so excited by noticing this, I felt the need to tell my girlfriend, or is it worse that I'm considering revisiting the restaurant again, even though it's rubbish, purely because of the hand dryer in the toilets? Am I and am I normal in the making? You certainly are, Dave. Uh, Russell's on the line. Oh, should we just go to him? Is he there now? Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello, mate. Well, how bizarre was that? Here's me uh, across <laughs> the other side of the world, and uh, I hear you talking about Dyson Airblade. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, to be honest, right. you, you could have right. come in at any point in the last seven weeks, and you'd have probably <laughs> found that at some point. The content level hasn't gone up since you left, I'm not going to lie great. to you. It was really comforting. It was, it was like being in a, in a strange kind of heaven. <laughs> just hearing you, I imagine that's what your heaven would be like, just you reiterating the many machines you've seen and giving your own little opinions. I'll tell you what, the Dyson Airblade is so powerful that if you had one in heaven, it'd blow all the clouds away. Everyone would fall to their deaths. Absolutely, uh, you and God sat there just kind of every so often looking at each other, lifting up the shirts, both with tattoos that say Dyson. I don't think I'd get on with God. Oh, come on. I'd like, to be, the, I'd like to be the one that on changed him. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to be the one that made him just uh, reissue the Bible, just saying, do you know, I've had a rethink. Just sort <laughs> yourselves out. No second chances. Um, but got, if they've got booze in heaven, that'll be a wonderful moment when you stra- <laughs> you strap up to the Almighty and go, did dinosaurs have religion? Because I've <laughs> asked me mate Russell, and, and he's got no, no opinions on it. You must know. You've got a beard. Anyway, how's tricks? How's uh, things in England? Are they well? Not so bad. It's been Lovely. raining this weekend. It was really nice all all April while you're away. It was sunny, 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 and everyone was right. going, "Oh, it shouldn't be sunny. It should be raining in April." And now it's raining in May, and they're all going, <laughs> "Tell us about that." And uh, who've you got? Uh, who've you got with you? I've got with me Matt the Voice Ford, known for today as Shakira Flaking Stevens Ford. Uh, we found him a nickname. We decided on Shakira. That's going to need to explain him. Why, why are you calling him Shakira? Uh, um, well, a, a mother called her child Shakira in uh, Wilkinson's in Sirencester, and I decided right. that to buck the trend, I would ruin any coolness surrounding the name Shakira by, uh, we discussed the fact that Matt suffers from flatulence and eczema, so okay. I'm trying to undermine the name Shakira. The uh, the only, uh, well, not the only good story, but the major, have you, have you done the story about Fordy and the lady in Edinburgh? No. Uh, let's not. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not. We might we'll, we'll, we'll get onto that later. <laughs> that, that paints you in a very good light. Flaky or <laughs> dancing Colombian, notwithstanding. Yeah. Very good light. That's, thanks for reminding me of that. Before hey. I forget, we had a request. Someone said, will you say on air, uh, I am playing air recorder? It means nothing to me. Who, me? Yeah. 
I am playing air recorder. There you go. Well, you just made someone's weekend, apparently. I don't know what it means, but... Uh, Christ, some people. The power you have over the country. I bet if you said cheese now, it would make someone's weekend. I went to uh, Cheese World the other day. Wow. Um, yep. It's the dullest, dullest place. Hey, I've got an Am I Normal as well. I've have you? Wow. Yeah. I went to a place called Luna Park, which is... Um, God, you'd have hated it, right? Like, this... Um, <laughs> kind of roller coaster and just as we were leaving it I sort of said how long has this been open for and this bloke said 100 years it was 100 years old this roller coaster we were going on and it did something very strange to me downstairs what I can only describe as dick tingle so my am I normal is that what time is it where you are because here it's 5 to 11 in the morning and people are having their breakfast well you know everyone suffers from a bit of dick tingle from time to time I'm guessing I'm guessing half our listeners don't uh, the ladies Okay. Well, and then we've probably got some elderly it's a, elderly it's a ride, listeners. With this a little this a little side thing says, "I ride so good, you'll grow a penis and it'll wobble a bit." <laughs> right. Okay. So, says, yeah, so I you... forgot. Sorry, it's ten to eight here. I can only apologise, but that's why I'm normal. I've had a god on board. I'm in a hotel room in a place called Tralagon, and I had a real incident yesterday. Um, with uh, I went swimming to this like leisure centre, and I sort of commandeered a float. You know the kind of floats that normally kids play with. Oh, I got trapped under one of those as a kid. Well, um, you probably won't enjoy this story much, but it was so... I've never wanted to be back in England more in my life. I'm swimming along on this float, and these a group of girls, about sort of eight, kind of came by, and they were on a rival float. They recognised you. Uh, yeah, and they... Uh, it's TV's friends. Russell Howard. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at that. That guy's been on row. Shouldn't have but... Freddy's in a swimming pool. Jesus. <laughs> um, but they kind of banged into me ever so slightly, and I said as a joke, Whoa, pirate! <laughs> and they started crying, one of them did, and, and ran off screaming, Mum, and you've got a real decision to make there. Do you sit in the pool in your trunk and wait, or do you run after her? You probably, you probably I wouldn't run after her. That's probably going to exacerbate the situation, to be honest. Not if you just had dick tingle. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I just got off the ride. It was, it was very lucky. But I decided to go over. Um, I didn't run. I kind of skipped. It's that awkward thing. I didn't skip. I, I walked. I didn't skip after the girl. God, you I'm never skipped by a well swimming pool. Anyway, the point is, this Health Australian lady said, why have you made my daughter cry? And I had to say to her, so I, I, I called her a pirate. And uh, she said, do you think that's the kind of behaviour an adult should do? And I said, no, not really. And I walked out, nearly crying in the change rooms. Did this kid have one eye? No, he didn't have one well, like eye. like a wooden leg? It was a little girl. And, uh, you know, I just called her a pirate. Yeah. Oh, what God, is the I world to coming back. to when I'm you back just... next week, though. That's exciting, isn't it? Two weeks today, isn't it? You're back. Um, two weeks today. Well, let me have a guess. Oh, no. No, I'm back next week. Have you not heard? No. Oh, news just in, yeah. God, she really took that pirate comment seriously, didn't she? Yeah, I don't yeah, want you in my country. Problems. What's next? <laughs> no, no, What's I'm next? You back. call my child an ice cream man? Get out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm back. I'm back for uh, for next week's show. Are you? Yeah, so I'm going to fly in. Just wow. To... Well, for that. So I don't know who you plan next week. I was going to be shot. doing the show with Terry Wogan and Chris Moyles live in the oh. studio next week, but I'll cancel them. It's all right. They're going nowhere yeah. in radio anyway. They've had their yeah. time. Uh, all right, then. Well, you're back next Sunday. Well, that's really exciting. Yeah, it'll be nice. Hang on a minute. There's a thing on the internet saying Ian Botham to Sue Six Music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's ever. Well, we'll take him on. I'm not bothered. Lovely. I'll land her. Um, yeah, love, well, uh, it, it, have a great show and um, uh, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you next week. Yeah, what are you up to this week? Um, well, John, I've got to do some gigs in front of uh, Conservative Australia. In I'm, I'm literally, you know, no offence to, you know, the backwater towns of England, but it's like being in England and going to those places. So, uh, you know, it, it's OK, but I just really want to get home. All right, then. Really well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a dinner party in Swindon planned sometime this week. I'll be honest, yeah. I'm going to Amsterdam after the show today, so I might not be around. Probably be, going, probably with some Amsterdam? chicks on a boat. Are you genuinely going to Amsterdam? What the hell are you going to do in Amsterdam? What ordinary people do in Amsterdam, mate? I'm going to sit in my hotel room on my own, muster the confidence to leave the flat, ask for a coffee and come back and drink it in the hotel. Hang on a minute. Are you... Are you going to go to have some hashish? <laughs> I'm not going to have any hashish, no, but oh. I've, it, I've accidentally worn my Big Lebowski t-shirt today, which means I'm going to fly to Amsterdam with possibly one of the most famous drug-taking film characters of all time plastered across my chest. Wow, that's really exciting. So, so are you doing a gig out there, or are you just going to go there? For yeah, I'm, ch I'm changing the face of comedy in Amsterdam, and then tomorrow I'm going to the Anne Frank Museum, where probably, hopefully, all the jokes will be out of my system, because I'm guessing that's not going to be a very funny vibe in there. Well, here's one for you. What you want to do 
um, dressed up as Aslan, hide in the uh, hide in the cupboard she used to hide in. Right. How does one dress up as Aslan? Him being a lion and all. Just get yourself a lion costume. You're in Amsterdam. There must be a short way. That's you probably pay some lady fifteen pound to dress you up as a lion. Will face paint do? Yeah, yeah, if you like, but don't get too hot, otherwise it'll smudge and then it'll be really scary. I could get my uh, face paint on and freak out some stoners. Um, <laughs> nice, that's now... the attitude. <laughs> hey, Narc. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This could be great. Um, this is, oh, this is really going on inside your head, so grow up and get back to college. Um, yes. Do you want to introduce the next track? It's a session track. We'll play the game that you make me play where you guess when it was recorded. I was way out with this one. <sighs> Thank God you said that game. I thought it was really <laughs> a different game we played. Yeah, no, we, d- we don't talk about that one. Okay, not, okay. not since right. what happened. Right, so what year do you think it was done, Joe? This isn't going to work. This is UB40 uh, and King. When do you reckon hey, I'll, it was... I'll be, well, I'll be you, you be me. Yeah. Right. I've asked my question. I don't know where you think I'm going with this. Uh, right. UB40 by King, recorded for the John Peel Show on Radio 1 on the 18th of December, 19... And I've given you a big clue there. 81! <laughs> <laughs> 1981. <laughs> oh, you do actually sound like me as well. Is that the best? <laughs> me and Lee were at the post office. <laughs> there you go. I'm all right. No, you're not. It was 1979. Yeah. Give me another go. Another go. Another go. 1982. I've given you the answer, and you've got further away. You, oh. I don't mind the impression, but I'm not an idiot. Um, oh. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Russell. It's been a giggle, and I look forward to having you back in the studio and your rightful throne uh, next week. Well, no, I'll tell you what, mate. Let's split the chair. <laughs> I'm not sitting on the same chair as you. Fair enough. See you. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Thanks for all your... Uh, on the website, by the way, you can recommend songs to me so that I can learn more about, uh, you know, my musical taste. I can try and improve it and mature it like a good cheese. Ian Botham, we searched, and there's no proof of him doing anything wrong, so we retract all those statements. Yeah. Sorry, Beefy. Terry Wogan, on the other hand, we're getting evidence of things he said now. <laughs> These are crackers. Um, Tom in South End. South End, don't get me started. Uh, how many points did we get in Eurovision, he wants to know. I think... Did we come second bottom? I think, I think we got, we got like, six. 16 or something. Did we get 16? Oh, that's all right. That's an improvement. So that answers that one. Uh, Wogan was very mean about the winner. He said she looked like the fat one out of Abbott and Costello. Um, And she says that women do have the equivalent of the tingle that Russell was on about. So we'll talk about these unsavoury matters when he gets back. We'll have no sex chat while I'm on the air. Uh, Re Eurovision. Terry Wogan introduced the Russian act by saying, do you remember when all Russian girls had moustaches and looked like Khrushchev's mother? Uh, lovely stuff, well done. I played the Wogan game last night, says Jordan and Joe in Bristol. You've got a drink every time he insults a nation or makes a dubious remark. I oh, ended up is... drinking a fair bit. Well done for being up this early. I thought you'd have a serious hangover. Terry's, this is a cracker. Probably uh, this... still drinking to get through all those <laughs> <rumors>. <laughs> Yeah, backlog. Uh, this is from Rosa in Liverpool. Hi, John. Terry's inappropriate comments included, If you're watching, kids, I ate one of Santa's reindeer earlier. And, uh, and then quotes the, uh, the Khrushchev's mother one as well. It's cracking. So well done, Terry Wogan. Uh, so am I normal? Now, have you got one? This is basically a feature where people do compulsions and weird little things you have to have in order and at right angles and all that business. The weird one I've got. I didn't think it was weird until I've I've really had to rack my brains. My alarm on my mobile phone in the morning that I set to get me up is the Sky News theme tune. (laughs) Right. Makes me feel like I'm starting the day in an important way, like me getting up is going to be the next headline or something like that. Is that why you were talking like that when we went on at 10 o'clock this morning? And then the info bar starts scrolling across, you know. Matt Ford hunting for Pop-Tarts. Information just shooting in at all angles. Right. You really get out of bed with a purpose. Really? Yeah. Oh, Even yeah, at four thirty in the morning. Absolutely. Um, well, we've got uh, we've got listeners. Am I normals coming in? And these are crackers. Have you got one there, Matt? Yeah, I've got one here from Jill in Wimbledon. Hi, John. Every time I walk through doors of a shop or shopping centre, I choose the ordinary doors, not the automatic doors, just in case I lose the use of my arms. And then, <laughs> even as the nerve to ask, am I normal? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of those end. Some people do just end by saying, I'm definitely not normal. I quite like that, though. That's, that's a real degree of thought about your life, and it's all about being grateful for things while you have them. I think that's. Imp- I don't think we're grateful. Like, all this whinging in the country about the NHS and stuff and bins collected every fortnight, you just think, just step back a bit, and it's cool. If you fall over in the street, you fully expect someone's going to come and pick you up and I'm fix sure. it. That's unbelievable. We don't focus on them. And that's about saying, I'm really glad I've got arms. And if you woke up every or morning... Is it, or is it being negative about modern technology. 
No, no, I think she's just saying, I'm really glad I can use my arms for stuff. And I bet she's happy. I bet she's very easy to please. Maybe that's the sort of relationship I should be in, where if ever I make an inappropriate remark about what she's wearing or something, I can just go, look, eyebrows, unbelievable. What a world we live in. Um, Emma in Northampton, this is a cracker. She says, uh, heard the show for the first time last week. Very good indeed. Welcome to the show. I'd like to think now a regular. Uh, my house backs onto a train line. I, I think I'd quite like to live by a train line. I was thinking about it yesterday. I quite like the sound of trains. And they don't run overnight, so it's not like sleep would be a problem. And they're probably quite cheap. Yeah, not yeah. not the people would want to. Yeah, yeah. And it'll stop people getting in your back garden. How? Well, because it's the train track, and they'd be scared to walk across it. Like, right, yeah, frightened yeah. thieves. I don't think you get many burglars who have kept confidence issues. Um, but anyway, she says, I, my house backs onto a train line. If I can hear a train in the distance and I'm on the stairs, I'm compelled to rush to get up or downstairs before the train go past the house. If I can't make it in time, I've got to go back down or up the stairs and start again to break the hoodoo. I do something a bit like that when you're trying to get home. If a car turns onto my road, I have to get in my door before it goes past or I pretend there's a sniper in it who's going to shoot me. And it makes you really glad to get home and lock the door. You're grinning. Do you do something similar? I like it when people set themselves little tests. Because <laughs> if your day's boring, you can set yourself these little things. The danger is, of course, when you then start adding other ones on, you get a bit too cocky. You think, oh, I'll get to the crossing before the bus does. And then if you're way ahead of the bus because it's gone into the wrong gear, they think, and the two cars behind, you then lose the test and you're on a negative. Stick to very clear goals. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'll do stuff like that. <laughs> and end up disappointed. Yeah, You've got you to aim high, though, haven't you? Bus. That's what you set out to do. You're a success. Yeah, but aim definition. for the cars as well, because one day you'll beat t 12 cars. There are a lot of people out there who just settle for the bus, Matt. Sometimes it's nice to beat a Ford Mondeo as well. Um, this is a good one. Uh, hello, fellas. Uh, Shakira and I in the studio. I've found myself talking to myself when I'm alone. Sometimes just regular getting ready comments like, where are my keys, pondering aloud. But increasingly, I'm chatting and commentating on things on the TV or radio, despite the fact that there's no one but me present. It reached a new low yesterday when I spoke to my reflection in the mirror. Am I normal? Uh, I think, well, I do that. Yeah. I talk to myself frequently. Where I used to live, there was a massive mirror. Uh, it was my face-pulling mirror. Every time I walked into my flat, I used to do a big grin to myself, and they took the mirror away, and I felt like I'd lost a friend because it was someone waiting for me when I got home, and it was me, but it was nice to say hello to myself. And she also said, I always thought this feature was basically an outlet for exhibitionists, but having realised that I do this, I'm, I'm compelled to join in. Because people, it's, it's, the whole point of it is that you're supposed to kind of feel guilty about the fact that you do these things as well. Um, I feel intimidated, said Esther in Oakhampton, uh, I don't know why I said that as if it was going to elicit some sort of response. I don't know where Oakhampton is, I'm sorry. Uh, next to, you know, the, all those oaks. Is it near Leicestershire? I think it's, uh, yeah. 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 I believe so. So no. you do know. There you go. You've I set yourself too. a little challenge there. And I've won. Your brain's gone, let's pretend to not know where Oakhampton is. And then it's gone, let's pretend to know where it is. And you did. You've surpassed yourself. Thanks. Um, I feel intimidated walking past a long row of cars when they're waiting at traffic lights. I'm always worried that they're secretly judging me. Am I normal? Uh, I don't think you're normal. I think you've probably got quite low self-esteem. <laughs> um, I don't think they're judging you, but it is nerve-wracking. I don't like walking through bars and restaurants because you feel everyone's looking at you and you instantly forget how to walk because yeah. you're concentrating so hard. I do the knee first and then I put it forward. And suddenly you're really forcing the walk and it looks ridiculous. And you catch your hip on the side of a table or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you really just, bad. it's very difficult, but you, you know, I, I think uh, Esther in Oakhampton probably takes quite a lot of pride in her appearance as a result of the fact that she's worried that everyone's judging her. So although she's never going to be happy in her life, she'll do good things in it. Um, so we've got lots of Am I Normals coming in, some absolute crackers. Uh, hello, John and Shakira. Uh, yesterday I was walking around Tadcaster with my boyfriend, living the dream, living the dream, uh, and saw a post box. It wasn't an ordinary post box, it was a double-sided post box, so I ran up and hugged it. I don't know why, I just felt the compulsion to do so, maybe because of my surprise at seeing two post boxes in one. Am I normal, Alex? No. No. Hugging post boxes shouldn't be... Uh, you've probably hindered someone posting a letter there. You can't condone that sort of behaviour. No, I can't go encouraging that. Imagine the bedlam that would take place across this it's country. Like a talk to Frank advert. If I said go out now and hug a post box, this country would be overrun with three people hugging well, the Royal post Mail boxes. would yeah. be after you for starters. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't be able to get you by post. There'd be email. <laughs> yeah. I'll, just, I'll just not reply to it. No. Um, we've got an Am I Normal there? Fordy Shakira. Yes, from Adam Haycroft, who I'm going to guess is 20 years old. Right. <laughs> hey John and Shakira, loving the show. When I'm doing the washing up, I pretend I'm giving everyone a bath. 
<laughs> the cups especially like it when I wash behind their ears, brackets <laughs> under the handle, close brackets. It makes washing up a bit more fun, Adam. P.S. Love the crib. Oh, that's not really part of the am, am I normal bit. I might as well read it out, otherwise you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> P.S. Love the cribs. Man's needs. It's a quality tune. Good. That's lovely. That's a lovely cute one. That's I bet a Adam's belter. a right cutie. I bet he was the one at school, the girls say, oh, he's so cute, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he lives in his own little fluffy world like Mr. Soft. But I bet he's got dark thoughts. It's all about balance. Anyone who tickles his cops. Has Maybe got this some... cleansing is psychological yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, I bet he's done some horrible stuff to animals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a clock tapper, says Jack. Every time I see a digital clock with a pattern like 2020, I have to go up and tap it. Uh, is that normal? We'll get a lot of those about numbers. Uh, they're the properly weird ones, people who do stuff with numbers. I have to rinse the taps with soapy water in public toilets before turning them off. Otherwise, I'll get the germs from previously unwashed hands. I think unwashed hands, probably not on the taps. But then I agree with you. It's that, that dilemma. How do you turn the taps on without touching something that you've just touched with your dirty wee hands? Um, but he, he says he cleans that. That's a public service, that. I wonder if Paul in Worcester this is. I wonder if he cleans all the soap taps. Is he using his bare hands? Um, Unless he's using some marigolds or something. He's <laughs> put into a greater contact of germs. He probably takes and you've sponges. And you've got to ask yourself, would standard soap be effective at killing the sort of germs that are going to build up in a service station? Well, uh, Truckers. We've had <laughs> bus drivers. <laughs> little kids. <laughs> touching all sorts of things and then touching them taps. Truckers. He thinks he's doing a public service. That have you had the... beef with truckers? That's, that was like a I've man who's been hurt truckers. by truckers I in the I don't want to eat anything with a trucker. I remember I'm getting into an argument with a trucker at a welcome break and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bit of an am I normal. That if I, I do so much driving, every now and again, a, a driver for a truck company will do something terrible and I will remember the name of the company he's driving for and endeavour to never use or endorse or provide work for that company again on the grounds of one driver. Like, there was one driver who, you know when you're coming onto the motorway and you expect them to move across and let you in? Didn't. And I nearly... And it was in the middle of the night, so there was nothing else around. It would have been very easy for him to do. I went mental. I was flashing. I was horn. I had fingers. I was all over the place. And then I remembered the film Duel, which is a cracking Ooh. film, and I got really nervous. But luckily, I burned him off in my Rover Metro. <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> Uh, but not in a business scenario, because you've lost my trade. Uh, at my normal, when travelling on a bus and the bus jolts or the driver breaks suddenly, I find myself in, in fear that I'll be thrown forward and the bars of the seat in front will make contact with my mouth, smashing <laughs> out my front teeth. That's Close not... your mouth. <laughs> yeah, or just wear a, a gum shield when travelling on the bus. And gloves. I'll learn to drive. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, we have, a, we have arguments every week about driving. You've recently passed your test. I have, yeah. I drove down here today, as, as well as I've already said. Yeah. I'm very proud of myself as well. Yeah, are you enjoying driving? Are you I a love careful it. driver for having very just got on the road? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mostly. Right, and when you passed your test, how many minors did you get? Did you, you didn't, oh, you didn't pass first time, did you? Passed We've had time. many arguments. Full time. You see, you fail under my rule. My rule is the three strikes and you're out. If you fail three times, you are a bad driver and you just shouldn't be allowed on the road. Well, that's rubbish. Well, <laughs> it's Because not. it doesn't give consideration to the conditions of your test. Right. How long in between Oh, so you're tests? saying it's all right to just be a bad driver in certain conditions? No. I ploughed into a bus stop and killed 12 people, but I will say my favour, Your Honour, it was raining. I was dazzled. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining, and you know when the sun comes through the clouds and gets in your eyes, so I just shut my eyes. Um, was that wrong? They didn't tell me on my test when I failed the first three times. No, but you could fail three tests in a, in a month, fair dues. Yeah, that's, that's quite commitment to being a bad driver. But then three tests, you know, over a few weeks, maybe you had different things going on, different stresses in your life. Right. I don't know, I'm not saying I did, I was just rubbish. I went through <laughs> exactly. red lights, mounted a curb and cut up some <laughs> pensioners. <laughs> that was all in one test. <laughs> it was a shocker of a test. Yeah. And actually, the worst thing was that when I pulled into the test centre afterwards, a little bit of me was expecting to say, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, old people shouldn't even be on the road, so well done. I endorse that driving. <laughs> Perfect example of why people just shouldn't be... It's a privilege being able to drive. It's not a right. You don't have a right to drive a car. You have to prove yourself capable of doing it. Um, so... <laughs> well, <laughs> nice prove to yourself a... now. Yeah, well, we'll see. So how long have you been driving? About two, three weeks now. Two, three weeks. Two, no three accidents weeks. yet, so... Well, the first day I did scrape it on a concrete <coughs> post in a multi-story car park. <laughs> First day. Nothing came out of nowhere. I actually had to ring my housemate up <laughs> to come and get it out of the car park for me. Did you? Yeah, I had to ring Sean up. Wow. <laughs> had to come and get it out for me. Wow. How You were trapped in a car parking well, space. I went into this car parking space and there was a Jaguar on one side and a concrete post on the other and I kind of got it in a bit wonky but thought, like an <laughs> idiot, I'll straighten this thing up. 
straighten this baby up. And I ended up with the car door right grind against the concrete post and the bumper right on the barrier. There was any way I went, I was just scraping the side of my car. So you I, just I had to ring my friend up, and he was just, having his dinner, so I had to wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait in the car oh, park. Did the Jaguar owner come back? I'd have loved to have gone back to my car in a multi-story car park and just see a man crying, unable to move, parked next door in an inferior car. <laughs> You're listening to Matt Ford endorsing everything I've ever thought about bad drivers on Six Music. <laughs> you said something off air then that uh, created havoc in the studio. I quite like you to say it again on there. Which bit was that? The uh, it started with I like that and ended with stuff and in the middle was the word oh, that Mika. upset. Me. Yeah, Mika, oh. it's brilliant. <laughs> oh, everyone went it's mental. It's kind of Scissor Sisters, Rocky Horror, <laughs> Drive Along, Tapping Your Foot. Look, the words are getting worse. He keeps saying other words. Adam Deneen, I, I, I don't think he carries a knife, but that's lucky for you. He's got a hot drink though. He will scold you. Oh, it's good camp pop. <laughs> I like it. I it's upbeat, it's positive for crying out loud. So much of the stuff these days is negative. Yeah. Let's have a bit of happiness in the world. Yeah. Let's have a bit of Mika. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, you don't agree with me one bit. It's just very seldom that I get to feel cool in the Six Music studio about <laughs> music, so I have to sell cut these moments and enjoy them. Um, we had another email in from Paul in Worcester Park. Uh, I forgot to read the part bit earlier. And we had... Oh, the Windy Sorry, Pops. Sorry, there's <laughs> biscuits. I handed out a lot of biscuits in that. And I think, <laughs> are you going to be sick? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting the one-twos. Do you want to, do you want to take a step out of the studio for a bit, mate? I'm fine, I'm fine, sorry about that. Good God. Oh! I always provide... Me, no, <laughs> it's fine. I always provide biscuits at 11.30, and I think for some reason, Matt, that you thought that the biscuits were a short-term offer. <laughs> <laughs> and that unless you ate them all straight yeah, away, gone, I would take fine. the biscuits away from you again. You've eaten a hell of a lot of biscuits there. I can eat them in just one go. Yeah, quite clearly. Especially you can... with the help of a dunk. Yeah. Softens them up on entry and uh, the back of the throat before you close the front of your face. It's brilliant. I, I think the fact that they're coming back on you, though, indicates there was work that needed to be done that was not fulfilled mastication exactly exactly um so paul in worcester park emails back about the toilet thing how do you get the taps on he says if there's paper towels he uses them to turn off the taps and he folds them <laughs> to make sure that he doesn't get any germs on his hands and that <clears throat> he says otherwise he puts soap and water into a cocked hand and rinses the taps over twice i don't think that's going to do anything no nah. Email and says, I was driving through nottingham the other day and saw a pink hippo parking very badly was that you fordy Who's that from? That's from uh, James Dowdswell. <laughs> Do you no, want to what? explain the Pink Hippo reference? It's quite a cool yes. story. It's not that cool now. Um, I was a hippo in an Edinburgh show yeah. a couple of summers ago. Not just ago. any Edinburgh show, though. <laughs> Tim Vine's current punch. Tim Vine's current punch, Edinburgh show. Five star sellout show. Yeah, uh, and you claim the five star <laughs> review, don't no, you, on I posters was and stuff. swanning round Edinburgh like <laughs> I had some part to do in the success. Yeah, well, that um, was partly because of your success with a lady, which is what Russell hinted about earlier. I, well, there was rumours that were, I strongly denied. There were rumours that you were seen coming out of a lady house <laughs> in the morning, walking down the street, chanting your own name. That were they were they confirmed, those stories? Strongly denied. <laughs> well, it's funny, because there's evidence on the internet of you confirming those stories. Uh, James in Bristol says, Hello, John, I had exactly the same type of run-in with a lorry driver when coming onto the M4. Haven't been to home base since. I like people that hold grudges, because I do. And but, he's named and shamed there. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't do that, because my list is about three sheets of A4. I have to be very careful about uh, who I who I go out uh, and buy stuff from. When my girlfriend asks me something, says Dylan, uh, I mutter anything. She then says, what? And I say, you heard the man, then we both giggle. She comments, why do you laugh at your own jokes? Are we normal? See, that's not a very good, am I normal, Dylan? But I, just everything about relationships there, isn't it? I just picture that little thing you do when you're having a dinner with other people. And they go, oh, what, what are you laughing at? And you go, it's <laughs> just a thing. thing we do. And they go, well, do you just want to do it at home? Because we're at dinner now, I was talking to you. And then you go off into a little reverie with your girlfriend. I don't think it's very appropriate. No. And you've got to be careful as well not to continue those into other relationships. Just because it works with oh, one, yeah. won't work with others. Yeah. Don't touch them there. <laughs> <laughs> or say that or whatever it is. You know, you've got to be very, very careful about thinking, this works. <laughs> I shall that... keep this in my little book of tricks, so next time I get dumped, I can use it. I'm having that as your new catchphrase. <laughs> Don't touch him there. You're listening to Shakira. <laughs> um, this one's weird, right? From Beck in Norwich. Uh, I have what look like baby faces on my knees, and one of them on the left looks a bit <laughs> evil. And I can make the one on the right look like it's eating. Why is she not on telly? <laughs> we should know about because this there are rigorous through. screening processes to prevent that. I mean, how? What do you see? I mean, that's that's <laughs> a three-second clip. That's what YouTube's for. What TV show are you going to give that? 
Oh, Barry Moore. You're joining us again for another episode of Knocking at the Knees, starring <laughs> Beck, an hour of tedious stuff where a knee looks like it's eating food. Yeah, it's a bit out of date, that. The old cabaret stuff. She could do... She could get work doing that. That could... You could make money as a living with silly knees. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Easy knees! Beck, unless you're living in a mansion, then you're wasting a talent there. So, so get yourself in, maybe film something, pop it on YouTube. Send us a picture or something. I mean, you can't. We, you need proof of claims like that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there's every chance she's making that up just to look cool. Yeah, but you could just escalate. She could end up making out. She's got all sorts of things on her back that speak or <laughs> pull sort of gestures. Um, there's a weird email. I, I don't quite... I, th I think it must be an Am I Normal. Am I Normal? I like taking photos of roadkill on my camera phone and showing them to people. I've got a cracking stoat with rigor mortis, which I assume is, is could be an innuendo, but I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> taking photos of roadkill. This gets back on to bad drivers. Did we have an email in about rubbish drivers? People texting in and backing you up about... I don't know why you'd want to photo the dead. Oh, here we go, here we go, here it comes, here it comes. You've got to hear this. Sit back, listen to this. You don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. from Sam in Cardiff. Cheeky old Sam. I managed to pass my test on my fifth time. Well done. Uh, and consequently get a lot of mocking for it. However, when I did finally pass, I only got two minors. Surely that makes me now a better driver, driver than those that passed first time with 13 minors. It's an interesting debate. It is an interesting debate. And it's one debate. that all drivers take part in in welcome breaks and other the <laughs> buys up and down the country. Well, they discuss how they're going to cut up men with afros in Rover Metros. And then photo it. <laughs> like uh, I don't agree with that. I think if you pass first time, it shows a natural skill for driving that isn't present in... So I will accept, uh, you know, the three thing allows for nerves, because I was really nervous on my test, and it's conceivable I would have made a mistake. Luckily, I'm brilliant, so I didn't. But, you know, some people aren't as good at me at everything. <laughs> Except well, talking, which I seem to have lost the skill for. Develop at a different rate. Yeah, slowly. So if right, okay, let's let's do it on education then. If you got a D in GCSE first time round and yeah. decided not to reset it, yeah. are you better than the person that retakes it and gets a B? Yeah. No, you're not. Oh, I don't know. Well, no, don't education... go to an employer and say, "Well, look, you know, I uh, yeah, I got a D. I didn't want to retake it." Yeah. Router. Not to say that all people who do get D's or anything like that, but then the guy who comes in with a B and says, or a girl, let's balance it out, comes in and says, I've got a B. But that's a different skill, though, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's the skill of working hard to improve yourself, which well, is a positive I attribute. My that's why I had to do my driving. I didn't give up. I kept sitting the test and no, then, but yeah, you I see, passed with I less think, minors than I did on my first, and I less minors than some of my friends. A have. large part of driving is just a skill that you either have or you don't. It's a spatial skill, and it's like, it's like IQ. You can kind of adapt it and you can work on it, but essentially... If you fail four times, five times, probably there's something seriously wrong. It's a dangerous thing. But I've pa I can drive fine now. I'll give you <laughs> For a lift two weeks. You're going next. I'm not driving anywhere with you. You've already scraped your car. I'm not going anywhere. I'm getting the train and then a plane and then I'll go to Amsterdam. Can't believe it, me in Amsterdam wandering around. <laughs> You've got some offensive text messages which I can't read out, but suffice to say they're very funny about me. I've been overwhelmed. <laughs> the strength of feeling against yeah. me and Mika. Yeah, you've really misjudged the vibe. <laughs> I've uh, misjudged the We may be in the, the same building the as Radio 2, but we're worlds apart. <laughs> um, someone, a few complaints. Uh, Oakhampton is in Devon. I think there are two, aren't there? Isn't there an OKE Hampton and an OAK Hampton? I'm not really sure. Uh, and a couple about things I can do while I'm in Amsterdam, which are always useful. Uh, someone says, I've just got back from Amsterdam. I'd like to recommend a museum uh, called the Sedelijk Museum CS. Currently relocating, but the exhibitions there are fantastic. And they also say the toilets in Holland are very eco-friendly. Um, I really don't like that. I went to Crete and all that. Oh, all that dear. Doing it in a bucket. Um, not to be honest. holes in the ground and a, a flipping bin to put the paper in. Yeah, you're really so, obliged oh, yeah. to say that sort of thing when someone books their flights. It's, oh, you know when you land, you're going to have to poo in a bucket uh, for a week. They'll say that at the travel agent, really. Yeah, well, I didn't go through a travel agent. Or wherever you book it from. Yeah. That should be the place, not just before you're about to land. I'm telling you now, if you're about to go to Crete, you're not going to enjoy the sanitary facilities there. Um, my mum, this is a good <laughs> am I normal, has nothing in her car apart from a brick in a Tesco carrier bag in the boot. I'm not sure why. There isn't a spare tyre in there. Is she normal? I don't think she is. Pete so what she calls her special key. Is she one of those mums, is she? I've got a different car today, love. I use my special key. And by the way, the rear window's missing. What? You know... <laughs> she's just come out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 straight through the window with a brick in her... Well, 
it would make some sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Unless she's buying bricks from Tesco, which isn't something I was aware they sold. Right, well, every little helps when you're building a house. <laughs> um, other supermarkets are available. I like that one, though, carry bag in the boot. I say love to your mother. Um, am I normal? I'm currently sitting watching BBC Six on Freeview and eating microchips. Uh, while I was in the kitchen, I made sure I could still see the TV. Not a lot happens on the telly when you watch this show. You're on the telly now. You can put your phone on telly. It says Matt Fawn on the telly. On the webcam there? No, no, on, the, on people's tellies, if they watch on Freeview, it says John Richardson and Matt Ford. Oh, which, to be honest, I asked if you could go in a smaller font, but I was told that was, uh, that was not available as an option. <laughs> right. So you have equal billing. <laughs> That's nice. I didn't really ask for that. Uh, when walking past an evil-looking dog, I attempt to mind meld with it, <laughs> sending it a thought not to bite my face. <laughs> Uh, that's from Neil in Glasgow. <laughs> I think dogs can sense that kind of thing. Now. Yeah. If you're trying to I mess with a dog, just don't look at it. You try to mess with a dog's out, mind, it's going to bite you. Yeah, yeah. You're not not supposed to mind stare. meld. Whatever <laughs> that was, you used it like it was a real word. I think it is from Harry Potter or something like oh, that. It's from dear. some sort of book. Um, he also ends his text. P.S. What is your favourite smell? Neil in Glasgow texts that. Mm. Um, I don't know. I like the smell of tarmac. Yeah. I like the smell of grass. I was going to say grass. Pies. You know, <laughs> pies and pastries, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, Greg's. Confirming all the stereotypes there. <laughs> What's your favourite pie? Meat and potato. Meat and Steak potato. Steak and ale. Textbook. Steak butter and pie is very nice. Have you ever had a butter pie? It's just, no. No, it's, it's potatoes cooked in butter in a pie. Sounds like a carbohydrate overload, but they're absolutely <laughs> delicious. If you're ever in a region and someone offers you a butter pie, you bite their hand off and then spit it out and say, that's disgusting. Have you not got any of those butter pies you were talking about? <laughs> it's my favourite part of the show because it gets organised completely behind my back. Someone texts in and then Adam, our producer, goes and finds me a girl to have an awkward conversation with. And uh, we have one on the line. Hello? Hello. Hi, uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm slightly nervous. I get nervous about this bit because <laughs> there's a chance I'll just panic and say something utterly ridiculous. I might accuse you of stealing someone's face. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, tell me, uh, who are you? I'm Meg. <laughs> Again, um, quite aggressive, early doors, isn't it, that? Yeah, um, I'm Meg and I live just outside Portsmouth. Oh, Portsmouth. I, I visit Portsmouth to get the ferry to the Isle of Wight occasionally. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking anecdote going well already. I got Sorry. given a girl's number after a gig yesterday and I didn't really want it. Uh, not in an offensive way, but I just I knew I wouldn't call, but you've got to be polite. And she said, oh, can I have a number? And I said, I don't live in London. And she said, neither do I. And I should have followed that up. So I realised all we clarified is that we definitely don't live to the same place, but we could live miles apart. Do so you live in Portsmouth? Uh, just outside it, in Waterlooville. Waterlooville. Well, you said that very posh then. Are you middle class? Um, I guess so. Um, yeah. You've got a big house. Well, Relatively. <laughs> Relatively, that means it's massive, but there's a bigger one down the street, and the people there you hate them. Uh, have you got animals? Uh, no, I don't have any pets. Right? Is that is that a choice because you hate pets, or you've had a bad experience with a pet? Uh, no, my my mum's allergic to um, cat hair, so we okay. don't have any pets like that. All right, but we so are getting fish. So fish. Yeah. I've never really got fish, to be honest. Well, <laughs> it, it was it was sort of a compromise because. We couldn't have a cat. A compromise between between a shark and a dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't like dogs anyway, so... Right, well, that's, that's an instant problem. I'm a big fan of the dog as a, uh, as a piece of art. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just scared of them, so... Oh, really? You should do a mind melt. We had a text in. If you're scared of a dog, just do a mind melt. I'll introduce you to Matt Ford, and then I'm going to let you talk to him, because Matt is successful with women. I've seen him work. Right? Okay. And I just, uh, I'll just let you chat with him and just see how free and easy it goes. So I'll hand you over to Matt. Okay. Hello, Meg. Hello. <laughs> Smooth, unbelievable. And uh, how, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, fine. You know uh, Meg's listened to the show and she knows you don't talk like this. <laughs> All right, that was a lovely little <laughs> squeal there, Meg. <laughs> that was delightful. Thank you. That's fine. Um, so, what are you doing Friday? <laughs> That's how quick it is, Richardson. That's how you got to work. Why have you picked Ponsing Friday? Ponsing around with hairy animals and amphibians. <laughs> Friday to me says, so, I don't want to see you for the next five days, but, uh... Nah, no, but what it says is, look, I'm a busy guy. I'm oh, in the really? media world here. Cut and thrust. <laughs> Give me a couple of days to get myself together. So, sorry, yeah. I'm interrupting. Go on. Let me watch you in action. No, I, I'm not doing anything on Friday. Excellent. <laughs> um... Ah, well, you've bottled it. No, now you've lost it. She's walked it. away, then. Meg, I've got to come clean. I've got a girlfriend. 
Oh, I had to say that. Is that going to be a problem? It is for me. You went in the very... I would never have the confidence to go in that fast. I wouldn't do it in real life. But then you I? panicked. In real life, if you say that to a girl, what are you doing Friday? And she goes, nothing. Bang, what are you going in with? Uh, oh, dear. Um, <laughs> well, I'll have to check... Uh, um, I, I didn't say which Friday, did I? What are you stumbled. doing Friday? Nothing. Loser! I'm going out <laughs> with my mates, having a cracking time. Probably not getting <laughs> drunk and pulling a bird. See you later. Um, all right then, so you live in Portsmouth. Do you want to come to a gig I'm doing in, uh, I'm doing the Wedgwood Room sometime in the next two months? Oh yeah, cool. All right then. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, this is how this always ends, I just put tickets on the door. I've got to warn you now, probably what I'll do is I'll just sneak in the back door of the gig, do the gig and then leave. because uh, okay. I find conversation in real life, even tenser than this. because uh, I will actually play if I'm talking to you as if there's an audience, uh, in real life. I spend my entire life playing to a fictitious audience that isn't actually there. But, uh, I'll put two tickets on the door so you can bring your mum and we can oh, argue thanks. about dogs and cats. Yeah. And fish. Um, <laughs> I'll put Meg plus one on the door and I can't say fair enough. Now, uh, email's coming in about my awkward conversation with a girl. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, I pointed out I didn't even realise when I said I'll put tickets on for you and your mum. That was a nice gesture. D dirty old people in the studio saying, oh yeah, <laughs> daughter and mother, is it? Unbelievable, you can't say anything to anyone. The world's run by sex. It's unbelievable. That's why John Prescott would be a loss to politics. At least he calmed everything down. Um, when Russell comes back, says Bex, are you still going to have your awkward conversations with girls feature? It's one of my favourite. I don't know, I suppose so. Yeah, maybe we'll do one each. It'd be ridiculous if Russell did it, though. It'd be unbelievable. Because you just get 50,000... Oh, oh, oh. Brooding women. <laughs> yeah. um, I've just discovered your show. I'm enjoying it a lot, says Sean. You guys are the kings of expletive deleted talk, which I think is a compliment. I'm going to take it as one. Uh, the swear word it makes me not, not entirely sure. Um, dear John and the shack. That's <laughs> uh, sound like I'm a big shed. <laughs> <laughs> are you willing to give any concession to a poorly advised learner whose instructor maybe advised them to put in for their test too early? Otherwise, you may be making driving ability assessments based on the poor skills of an overconfident instructor. Personally, I don't. People should know in themselves if they're ready for their tests. I absolutely do give a concession to that because I feel first time I know I was put in too, too early. early. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, when I said to my driving. <laughs> Uh, what do you call him, teacher, the day before, I said, so then, what, what do you reckon for tomorrow? He went, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which wasn't the best. What do you expect him to say? Yeah, of course, mate, you'll be fine. Just stick to what I've told you and, you know, follow the traffic signals or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, don't, you'll be fine, don't, don't worry about it, you're a good driver. Don't go through red lights and cut up old people. Did you need him to seriously say that? No, it sounds like he's done everything he could. pep talk before, you know, a big test in your life would have been nice. I think that's, that's no excuse, so got, to be honest. You know, what was worse than giving me lucky Heather? Fingers if, crossed. If you went through a red light, to Rubbish. be honest, and you need to be told... Imagine getting... I mean, you've, you've maybe got an excuse. If you're putting for your test so early that you get in... <laughs> And the instructor and the examiner sits next to you and you go, listen, just before, we haven't really cleared this up, red and green, what's, what's the difference? We haven't done that bit yet, but I can drive. Then you've got an excuse, but otherwise not. Uh, Kevin uh, says Matt passing his test is brilliant. Cheers, Kev. Well done. Try following Matt and find out how good your own driving really is. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I don't need to follow someone veering across the road <laughs> and match them perfectly to confirm that I know how to drive. Is this, says uh, someone, oh, it's Kevin again, is this the famous well-known Nottingham goalkeeper, Matt Ford? Oh, my word. Yeah, apparently there's a famous Nottingham goalkeeper. I played in goal during a charity match once. Oh, did you? Is this a friend of yours, Who, then? What's the name? Well, I, I was going to read the name because it's funny, but then I... Go on. Uh, Kevin Cocker. Ah, that's right, Kev, yeah. Oh, is that Kev? Yes, yeah. I can't, but you cannot tell him his name's Kevin Cocker yeah, and you no, call him Kev. He's had his name read out on Mansfield as well. No one ever believes that's his name. Right. He's a legend. Yeah, people across Manfield, furious. <laughs> um, someone says, I'd be happy to give you a butter pie, John, then we can lie back and listen to Mika. Um, I'm not a fan of Mika, to be honest. Um, you rock, Pedro from Bristol, and then an inappropriate comment about girls. Um, I went to Amsterdam the other weekend and made the error of scoffing a whole space cake. Oof. That's not an error I'll be making, to be honest. If it says space, I'm avoiding it. And even if there's a space museum... Find out what the Dutch for space is, just in yeah. case. Space. <laughs> <laughs> space cakes. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> isn't it? <laughs> they don't just speak in English. I'm told they do. Everyone I've met. So I, it's the first time I've been somewhere where I don't speak the language. I didn't really travel to places where I speak the language, because I think you should. I'm nervous about putting myself in the hands of people. Well, don't do that. They could say anything to me and I wouldn't know. But everyone says, oh, don't worry, they'll speak English anyway. I've got to find my way from the airport to the gig on my own. How am I going to do that? 
going to touch it. I'll just go, can you take me to the shanta? And then hope <laughs> that they understand. <laughs> uh, uh, Liz in Twyford uh, says, John, all the people I know that passed first time ended up totaling their cars in hedges. If you total your car in a hedge, hedges are quite soft, Everyone to be she knows. Everyone she knows, yeah. Maybe What's it's you, Liz. <laughs> we ought to give her some sort of warning. Liz in Twyford, maybe you're putting people you're off. Mate you're mate Liz in Twyford, get a bike. <laughs> um, I imagine that going out on a date with you, someone says, must be similar to going on a job interview. But, well, you know, you've probably got... I was going to say you've got more chance of success, but maybe you haven't. Is that from someone who's unemployed? <laughs> um, to join the baying hordes of Trekkies, no doubt pointing this out, says Stu. I don't want to offend you, Stu, but you are the only one. Uh, but thanks. Uh, the mind meld was something the Vulcans used to do in Star Trek. So, uh... Of course. Now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you're sorry a for, Sorry for mocking that ridiculous word. I didn't realise that uh, hordes of people who like to wear lycra at conventions and chase after old American chubby men <laughs> had already claimed the word for themselves. What an idiot. That's my Sunday down the pan. I don't think they were claiming the word. I think he was just pointing it out. Quite angry. You really shouldn't get up at 4.30 in the Trekkies. morning. You've tried to boost yourself with some biscuits, but it's really not working. Went back for the biscuits then, <laughs> despite being burnt before. Yeah, I had some more biscuits. Two. Pa- I'm not being funny. Two packets of biscuits, and they're mostly gone. Now, I can say personally, I haven't had any biscuits yet this morning. Deneen, you had a packet of the other things, so you didn't even touch them. Adam uh, Hudson, have you had any biscuits? You probably dropped yours, the form you're on this morning. (laughs) Trod them into the carpet. I had a couple. You had a couple? I've had a lot. How many biscuits do you reckon you've eaten? 12 or 13? Never. There's more than 12 or 13. I brought in 300 biscuits this morning. There's two left. We've had an email in from uh, Tom who says, save yourself the crashing disappointment of going to the Anne Frank Museum and simply imagine yourself walking through a secondary school drama department after everyone's gone home. I didn't enjoy the book, to be honest. Have you read Anne Frank's diary? I haven't, no. I really expected more of it. I don't know why, naively, I thought, oh, it's a book, so it must have some sort of narrative thread Mm. and a denouement. And it is literally just someone's diary. And it was just... Didn't really go for it, to be honest. It's just, we know so much about the war now. that uh, Anyway, uh, he says, For a more realistic entertainment, visit Mr Tommy Savage, an enthusiastically psychotic hostile proprietor who believes he's uncovered an enormous conspiracy involving the Irish government. Feel the fear when he leaves you to lock around the room every expect- second expecting to hear the key turn and an unsettlingly calm voice inform you of impending fate. That sounds like exactly the sort of thing I want to do with a Monday on my own. Thanks for that, uh, Tom. And uh, someone says, uh, John, there are trains throughout the night in most places, as we were talking about earlier on living by a train track. Oh, right. Really long goods ones, loud and clattery. The thought that have you thinking, I could jump on that and have a wacky adventure. You do always think that, don't if you? If you use words like wacky, crazy, you're not. <laughs> well, that's a sweeping judgement. And I'm a fan of the sweeping judgement, don't get me wrong, I slip but them in wherever possible. It's for other people to give you those labels. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah, but if you're wacky and crazy, you don't really you understand. You wouldn't call yourself Funny John Richardson, would you? You wouldn't walk into a pub and say, and they said, oh, what's your name? My name's Funny John Richardson. Is that not, shall I Th- not be doing You'd say, my that? name's John, they'd have a two-minute conversation with you. You know what, John? You're funny. Generally, they call say... you Funny John Richardson. If they say, who are you? I say, what do you mean, who am I? Do you not know who I am? Look at the T-shirt. And then I just walk out. Did we have a text in about the loving the mother thing? I didn't get that. We're, we're trying to get uh, love to your mother as a legitimate way of ending all conversations, letters, emails. And someone emailed in, I think it was James in Kent, was it? Someone in Kent uh, texting in to say, do I mind if they use it on their uh, local radio show? I say, no, whatever you do, take it to work with you, take it onto the radio. Was it James? It was James in Kent. So uh, if you're in the Kent area, listen to James's breakfast show. To be honest, listen to Sean Keaveney on Six Music. But uh, James in Kent, love to your mother. Let's let's spread the fire of uh, loving mothers. Uh, text coming in about Star Trek. You've started something now, Matt, by getting in a tears about them. Uh, <laughs> What kind of primitive life force? <laughs> <laughs> Only a Star Trek fan would describe you as a life force. And primitive. <laughs> what kind of primitive life force doesn't know what a mind melt is? I don't know. The world today. Is that what that email actually says? That's all that says. says. It's a text. I mean, that's 12p just to voice that. I mean, Plus you're ruining someone network, Sunday. Charlie. Depending on your network charge, obviously, I'm, I'm sort of maximising it for comic effect. I would have said 15p, but you wouldn't have believed it. The... Hi, John. On the subject of Star Trek, I, I hate the fact that I've received an email that says on the subject of Star Trek, because it means I've been talking about it. I've got no strong objections to Star Trek. It's just one of the things I would seek to avoid talking about. 
as if as if this is responding to anything I've said. On the subject of Star Trek, Picard was way better than any other captain, Andrew in Wigan. When did I invite people to text invalid opinions about uh, captains on Star Trek? <sighs> Andrew, you live in the northwest of England. A region that is vibrant. Observational comedy from that is, part. That is vibrant, <laughs> that is alive with culture, music and sport. And you spent your life emailing and texting radio presenters. Well, don't have a pop at that. Trek. We need input, mate. About Star Trek. I hope you're going to support Wigan today. I hope they stay up, Wigan, on the yeah, last half. I'm really worried it's the end of football today. I hate this day every year. Well, for some of you it is. Nottingham Forest, of course, in the playoff semi-final next Friday yeah. and hopefully the final the Sunday after. And we all hope that they don't go up so that they're not in the league above Leeds. Um, James, uh, the guy who does the radio show in Kent, says he's going to do that as from tomorrow and email us in an MP3 of it. It's a done deal. Love to your mother in James. So next we'll try and get some clips in of, uh, of James saying love to your mother. Now, we're doing uh, selfless good deeds now. Uh, we laid off this for a bit to get some build-up of input on it. Now, this week's cake, have you done anything selfless this week, Matt? Standard stuff, cups of tea for people, Yeah. holding my tongue when <laughs> I would have preferred to tell people what I really thought. Then. Right, you didn't do much holding where Star Trek was concerned I, then? Well, I did. Did you? Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, that I was sponsored a, a dog this a week. Sponsored to, a dog. To do what? Just, uh, he's doing a London Marathon next year. <laughs> Just to exist, so I gave it money. It's an abandoned dog. Lives in West London. I'm well, you go give it to it. an abandoned dog charity, not just to the dog itself. Yeah, I haven't got a direct debit set up to the dog. He hasn't got a bank account. It just wouldn't work. Do you know what I mean? Barclays don't do a rough account. <laughs> um, but So that was my good deed for the week, was sponsoring a dog. But, you know, maybe it's using the money for drugs. I don't know. You just never know with dogs these days, do you? You look at them and you think, you know. Some of them reason. are in a the right state. Yeah, it looks like a happy dog, though. And I only p I wanted to pick one that you could visit. No point in sponsoring a dog I'm not going to get to go and see. Anyway, uh, in the paper, cracking story this week, Philip Workman, right, I say cracking story, I don't mean to put a positive spin on this. He was on death row and he was killed this week, right? But as his last deed ever, they offered him his last meal and he decided that because... Well, one thing you're deprived of when you're in prison is the chance to do a charitable deed. And he wanted to give his last meal away. So he said, I want a vegetarian pizza, but I want to give it to a homeless person in the city. And they denied him that opportunity, which I think is, is pretty disgusting, to be honest. It's not a hard thing. And he died without doing that. And a woman was so angry about that. Her name was uh, Donna Spangler. She's a cracking <laughs> name. Uh, she, she decided to go out with a friend, and she raised some money. Uh, and they, raised, they, they bought $1,200 worth of vegetarian pizzas. They put the word out. Everyone in the town bought vegetarian pizzas and sent them to homeless shelters. And over that day, $1,200 worth of vegetarian pizza was sent to, to homeless shelters. I think that's a cracking good deed. And she was angry. A, a quote, she said that uh, Philip Workman was trying to do a good deed and no one would help. Ah, right. But if his good deed would have gone ahead, one pizza, it was denied 1200 quid's worth. Right, so you're saying it's a good thing. Well, this yeah, is the, the problem. Prison, the prison obviously <laughs> saw this coming and thought, actually, <laughs> we want in on this good deed. If we just give away one pizza, and let's face it, American prisons are strapped for cash, as we all know, <laughs> and uh, they couldn't afford to give that money. They realised, if we deny this, we'll start a movement. I don't think they did. This will probably spread to Britain, they thought. Yeah. And low. If we deny this pizza, <laughs> hey, maybe they get Hawaiian, maybe they get pepperoni. No anchovies! <laughs> Well, this is what happens every week. I try and start this good deed thing. And there comes a point when you just realise that they either backfire or like that, they're malicious. They turn into good deeds that backfire. Like I put on a, a recipe on the website for lentil roast, which is a nice deed, spreading good food. Someone's cooking it today. Someone emailed in to say that their mum's cooking that. It's a crack. It's a lovely meal. Anyway, and, and one of the, you know, they all backfire. Like uh, Kim in Nottinghamshire says, Last night I cooked, and I use the term lightly, a tuna pasta salad for my little brother. Granted, the dish didn't exactly display any culinary skills, but to be told told that it was under-seasoned by a 15-year-old boy whose favourite dishes include cheese toasties and microwavable lasagna was a little bit hard to take. He was so determined that he needed more favour, he added his own side serving of English mustard and called me a Mardi bugger for complaining about it next time he can starve. Good deeds that backfire. It's ridiculous. That kid needs a good deed across the face. <laughs> I don't think you can call oh, that great a great little schweiner. <laughs> he needs some instant discipline. I blame Great British Menu. I've been getting so angry at Great British Menu this week. I don't know if you watch it. Jenny Bond, you've no right to be on it. You, you know about the royal family. You don't know about the French, so just leave it. But they do this thing, the BBC, on their programmes now, that they've decided, oh, God, we don't have advert breaks. 
and everyone in the country is an idiot. So if we don't give them a little break in the middle of the programme, they'll go and stick their head in the fridge or something out of boredom. So there's this bit in the middle where they go, still to come on Great British Menu. And you go, I know what's still to come. And they just go, still to come. The chefs that have cooked the first half of the dish that you're watching are going to cook the second half of the dish. And you go, of course they are. The only reason I'm not watching them cook it already is because they're interrupting me to tell me that they're going to do that. You get really angry at pointless interruptions. Jenny Bond's swanning around trying to wind up chefs who are clearly just getting on and working together and she goes, oh, did you hear what you just said about your mother? And she's just stirring stuff up. You don't need to. Just let's watch people do what they're good at. Um, there are lots of emails coming in wrapping stuff. Someone's just texted in, yes, I enjoy that. I, I watch the programme and that bit really annoys me. It's infuriating. Uh, someone says, please could you do your Dutch accent again? Love your mother. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Yes, sure. I've turned it to Borat now. <laughs> you should learn to text. Um, <laughs> Uh, I wonder how late you can get cancelled for a gig. I wonder if I'm just at check-in and they go, oh, a message from Mr Richardson it says just turn message around. Message from Mr Richardson. <laughs> she says just turn around and walk back home. You're not needed in Amsterdam. Um, Paul in Ashton underline, lentil roast rocks quite comprehensively. <laughs> oh, that's like kids who say, boys, they rock. You don't get a lot of emails on Six Music that say lentil roast rocks, unless lentil roast are a new band. If you're out there and you're forming a band, call it lentil roast. Some heavy death I'll, metal. I'll give you some airplay. Um, right, a couple, we're, we're leaving Star Trek after this, because people are getting so angry. Rich in Hampshire. Patrick Stewart, who played Picard, is Yorkshire, which is in the north. Apropos of nothing. Cheers for that. Lay off, Star Trek. Star Trek changed the world. Have you? Rich in Hampshire. I don't think Star Trek has changed the world, and if it has, certainly not in any... It's, gr it's good telly. It gives people something to... I don't watch it, but it's up to you what you choose to watch. But don't tell me it's changed the world, because it hasn't. And then <laughs> Mike Collar in Birmingham talks about sex with Uhuru from Star Trek. I found her very attractive, albeit she didn't have much competition. Well, in space, when everyone's got three ears and two eyes... <laughs> three ears and two eyes. Weirdos. Um, saying that Chekhov had a nice bomb. Do I win? anything might call it in Birmingham no I don't I don't think you do in fact I think you've lost in a very profound way uh, and this is the last word now Gavin in Bradford mind melt he says question mark, and I picture him actually saying that out loud as he was right mind melt cheese melts are much tastier well of course they are of course they are so we're talking about nice things you've done um, the Shaxter aka Shackamack aka Jack Shackawack uh, this email comes into. I use the word wacky ironically. I frown upon the word being used without irony. These people do not need to be allowed in the public arena. A uh, nice thing what I've done. Whilst in the street firing the other week, a drunk male between the age of 38 and 42, <coughs> important to specify, I could have just said about 40, uh, came up to me asking for a pound so he could get a nasty lager. He said he'd become dependent on alcohol and would have a fit any time soon. Asked if I wanted that on my conscience. See, this is an example of them backfiring, because what what should be a nice deed has then got all sort of context on it. If you've got one there, Matt. Yeah, I've got one here from Matthew J. Fleming. You've got one here? You should have three, you oh, weirdo. Oh, Vander Holyfield. Um, should I <laughs> read this out from the start? Yeah, yeah. It's quite long. Yeah, but you've got a lovely voice. People okay. want to hear you. Shall I do it in my kind of late night? Or just mode? do it quickly. Okay. Hi, John. I listened to your show this morning on the wonderful Listen Again facility and really enjoyed the one good deed section and took great interest in the good deeds that went a bit wrong. Faster, faster, faster. After listening to this, I went for a run around Howe Park during a small boy about four years old chasing a ball Slower. and towards me along the path. I stopped the ball so the small child could retrieve it without fear of being trampled by other runners or knocked down by a reckless cyclist. I did think about kicking the ball back to the boy, but remembered the good deeds that had gone wrong, and decided if I attempted to do this I would misjudge the manoeuvre and either hoof the ball into the middle of the park, far out of reach of the small child, or kick it into his small face with great force, causing tears before bedtime. But thanks to your cautionary tale, neither of these happened, and I got a good deed out of it. Cheers, Matt. See, I, I like that email just because of the image of kicking a ball into a small boy's face. That's basically what that email's about. Um, well, that's it then. We've finished, we've finished the show now. Have Crikey. you enjoyed it, Matt? I've loved it. Thanks it's very much. It's been a pleasure having you company. Cheers. And I wish you all the best in the future. Wish and I tell you what, love to your mother as well. Cheers. And I've met your mum. I like her. She's a very nice, very nice lady. She met, I stayed at your house, and most people, when they say, I'm going to put a sofa bed out for you, they just have a sofa, and they say, I'll put a blanket on it. But your mum, like, properly laid it out, pillows, and a little towel with a, a suite on it. 
just at her house. It was unbelievable. So, uh, so well done to you, Mum. Sure. That's it for uh, that's it for me standing in. From next week, Russell Howard is back. Uh, in the chair. It's been an absolute delight doing the, uh, the seven shows on my own, and partly because of all the texts and emails we've had, all of which have been uh, of outstanding quality. So uh, thanks very much for your input. Next week, Russell Howard will be the one saying hello to you, and I'll be the one. I'll just go back to being my sort of usual sultry, chipping in every now and again with a negative comment. Um, what are you doing for the rest of today, Matt? I'm going to drive back to Nottingham. Lovely stuff. Safely. And then uh, cut myself some spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Seriously, you know, oh, I really wanted your last word to be bolognese because you said it so badly. I'm going to cook spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Listening to Matt Ford, uh, we're handing over to the music week now. Thanks for your company. We'll speak to you again next week. Take care and love to your mothers. Six music.